sense of responsibility. She's she's responsible for everything in the home. Ya kwamba mwanamke akona ile dhana ya majukumu, yeye anajukumika kwa majukumu ya nyumbani. When she sees that the husband is not doing a good job, then she will take over the whole home. Ya kwamba mke anapoona mume hashughuliki na mambo ya goma, mke huwa anavumilia na kushika yale mahitaji yote ya goma. Usually women have a strong sense of responsibility that they take care of the children even when the husband doesn't take care of the children. Ya kwamba mke ana dhana kubwa sana ya utunzaji na majukumu. Ijapokuwa mume hashughuliki watoto, utapata mke amewashika wale watoto vizuri na kuwashughulikia sawa sawa. What happened then the woman when she sees that the husband doesn't take to his job, the woman would take over and would talk a lot and try to control the whole family. Na sasa wakati mume ashughuliki mahitaji ya familia, utapata mke amechukua yale mahitaji yote na kuyatunza na kuyajali. A healthy family would be the husband loving the wife and the wife submit to the husband and and make the husband feel happy. And then they all they both can enjoy life together. Familia yeye afya ni ile ambayo mume anampenda mke na mke naye anayenyekea watoto wote wanawaguza katika upendo. So there is wisdom in what the, the Bible says. The, the Bible is full of wisdom. Kwa hivyo Biblia imejaa sana mambo ya hekima katika mambo ya ndoa. Now at the same time I want to say the weakness of the woman and the man. Kwa hivyo pia nataka kuzungumza kuhusu weakness or weakness. Uh-huh. Anataka kuhusu udhaifu wa mwanamke na udhaifu wa mwanaume. The weakness of the woman is if the husband doesn't do a good job, the woman would talk a lot, would nag a lot because she has a strong sense of responsibility. Basi mume kama hatakuwa na kazi nzuri, mke huyu atamsema zaidi, atamsimama zaidi kwa sababu mke akona ile dhana ya kutukumika. And the more she talks, the more the husband wants to run away. Na sasa wakati mke unapopigia mmeo kelele kila wakati, unamfanya mmeo anakimbia kwenda mbali, anaheba kwenye nyumba. But the wife says, well he doesn't take care of the family, so I have to tell him, whatever I see him, I'll tell him, take care of the children, bring money back. Na sasa huyo mke anatembea, mwenye na kutuwa na hae kule njia na mwangia kule mme wake na msuguliki, sasa hayo mambo inafanya mme anakimbia zaidi. The more the woman talk like that, the more the man will run away. Zile mke unabio zidi kuwamia juu ya mme wako, nivyo unako mfukuza mme wako na kwenda mbali zaidi. So what can a woman do? Sasa tafanya nini? And I want to say the worst of this, that women can change the husband with love. Nataka kusema hivi, hekima hapa ni kwamba wewe mke unaweza kumbadilisha mme wako kwa upendo. Now of course the, the best situation is that the husband cares about the wife and then the wife cares about the husband, then it makes it very easy. Ya kwamba ni la muhimu kwamba mke akamtunze mume naye mume akamtunze mke hapo familia itakuwa na wepesi wa kufanya maneno. But if the husband doesn't take care of the family and doesn't listen to the wife, what can the wife do? Basi kama mke hawezi akamtunza mume, sasa kama mume hawezi akamtunza mke, huyu mke atafanya nini? And I want to say, why is here? Don't ever keep nagging your, your husband. You didn't do it, you didn't, you have to do it, you have to do it. And I say, my Ify, so I want to hire a woman who wants to ask a woman, 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 who wants to ask a woman. But instead, the woman can say, look at the good things of the husband. You have done that. I'm very happy you have done those things. Lakini wewe mke unaweza kuangalia mambo mazuri ambayo mmeo amefanya na mwambia wote ni mlefanya jambo nzuri sana uendelee kufanya hivyo Now I want to say men like to be respected Nataka kusema wanaume wanapenda waheshimiwe Women like to be cared for and loved Lakini mwanamke anapenda sana apendwe na pia atunzwe So if the, the wives Respect the husband say, well, you've done a good job, you have earned money for us, and you have helped us, and, and it will make the husband feel happy. Wewe kama mke basi unako mshukuru mmeo, kwa mama mayafanya, utakufanya uyu mme akwe na fura. And the wife can say to her husband, you know, whenever you stay with me, I'm happy. Na wewe basi mme, unaweza kumambia mkeo, kila wakati unako ishi na mimi, nasikia mkona fura. And the wife can also guide the husband. 
Na sasa pia mke we mke ana uwezo wa kumpa mume wake mwelekeo. The Lord can say I have something unhappy. And I want to tell you and if you listen I will be very happy it will support, it will support me. Kwa mfano wewe kama mwanamke unamwambia mume wako kwamba ni neno jambo ambalo nimekasirisha na kama utanisikiliza nikwambie nitakuwa na furaha. Why is need to tell the husband when you listen to me I'm very happy it will support me. Mke unafaa kumwambia mkeo kwamba kama unisikiliza nitakuwa na furaha na nitakusaidia. When the husband feel needed then the husband will have the motivation to love the wife. Yaani mume akihisi kwamba kwa kweli anahitajika basi hilo jambo litamtochea mume arejelee ndoa yake. And then whenever the husband loves the wife the wife will reward him. Na sasa mke mume unapompenda mkeo unamfanya mke wako kupenda zaidi na kujali zaidi familia. Now how can husband and wife reward each other? Na sasa mume wewe unaweza kuzungumza vipi kwa mkeo? There are five things. Kuna vitu vitano that husband and wife can do to each other that this is a language of love. Ya kwamba mambo ambayo wanaweza fanya pamoja na katika upendo. You can write this. You can write this down. Unaweza kuandika mambo haya matano. This is a five languages of love. Ya kwamba kuna semi tano za upendo. This is things you do that convey love. Vitu ambavyo unafanya ili vidhihirishe upendo. The first language of love is being together. Aha, cha kwanza katika ndoa ni kuwa pamoja. Now for women they like this much more than men. Because for women when the husband is with her she feel loved. Aha, wake wanapenda hii zaidi kushinda mume. Kwamba mke akiwa pamoja na mume wake anasikia amependwa. But when we are with her don't just look at the cell phone. Sorry, don't just look at the cell phone. <laughs> Wewe mume basi ukiwa na mkeo weka chini simu wa unajua siku hizi kitu kimekuja Facebook. That we have time to be concentrated in the wife. Ya kwamba ukakuwa na muda wako wa kutosha na mkeo. If you want a reward a loving family, you want to give and divide attention to your wife. Kama ungelipenda kuwa na familia nzuri, lazima huyo mtu ambaye unaweka makini yako sana katika familia. The second Language of love is encouraging words, loving words. Sehemu ya pili ni kunena maneno ya kutia moyo. Number three are service, helping each other, helping the other person. Ya tatu ni kusaidiana kazi. And number four are gifts. Na ya nene ni vipao. Gifts za wa gifts. Gifts, gifts. To give. Ya tukio kifo. Aha. Ya nne ni kuletea mkeo zawadi ama mmeo zawadi. The gift doesn't have to be expensive. Si lazima uende ukatafute zawadi ambayo ni ya hela nyingi sana. It could be a very simple thing. Naweza kuwa tu kitu rahisi. Something he or she likes. Kitu ambacho yeye mkeo ama mume anakipenda. And number five is body contact. Na ya tano ni kuwasiliana kwa kimwili. Now children like to be hugged and held on to. Watoto wanapenda sana wabebe kwenye mikono na pia wabusiwe. When people grow up, we still like people to have to hug us or have body contact. When we grow up, we still like people to have body contact. Mtoto akiwa mdogo anapenda sana kubebwa na pia kubusiwa hata unapo anapoelewa kukua pia unahitaji hiyo busu. So when a husband does something good, wakati mmeo anafanya kitu kizuri, the wife can hold on to her hair or hug him or kiss him to show love. Yaani sasa mume amekufanyia jambo nzuri, wewe mke kile unafaa kufanya ni kuja kumkamata na ukambusu. I want to say that for most men, the language of love they like most is body contact. Nataka kuambia wanaume kitu ambacho wanapenda kingi ni yale mawasiliano ya mwili. Now for me and my wife together, we when we walk we always hold hands. Yeye na mkewe hata wakiwa nchi yetu wakitembea wamekamatana mikono wanatembea kama wameshikana. When we sleep we hold hands. Hata kama wamekaa hivyo hivyo. When we eat we hold hands. Ah, wakikula wameshikana mikono. It's a language of showing care and love. Yani hiyo ni lugha ya kuonyesha upendo na 
to that. Now for women, what they like most are concentrated time together and loving words and encouraging words. And then for men, what the words they like are words of appreciation or admiration. Oh, you're so great, you're so strong, you're so wonderful. Na mume kitu ambacho anapenda ni wewe kumpa heshima na kumshukuru na kumwambia maneno mazuri kama wewe ni mzuri wewe ni wa nguvu zaidi. So why is your say to your husband to touch you and say, "Wow, well, you're so muscular, you're so strong." Basi wewe mwanamke ila mahali unaweza kuwa na uhuru wa kwenda mahali mbeo yuko na mshika mikono na mwambia, "Hey jamani, siku hizi umeunga." And, and also, husbands like the wife to hug them and kiss them. Na pia wanawagume wanapenda mke uti umbusu, mshike. Now you might say this is not an African culture. Na kini, anajua kwamba, si hili, haya mamo rea jumbuza, siyo tamaduni ya Afrika. Let me ask you, is it African culture or not? Je, ni maulize, mamo haya nafanyika Afrika ama siyo tamaduni ya Afrika. But I know Before marriage, a lot of young men and women they like to hug each other. But like me, when I was a kwama, mume kama hadi ya mwa mume yaki wa katika hali ya kuchumbiana, wana pendana, wana shikana, wana tembea kwa moja. But after marriage, they lose interest and they just like to fight. Na sasa wakisha ilia katika ndoa, wiyani ile hamu inaisha. Sasa kile kina kime baki, watu kicha kuna magonde na makofi. But when people fight, actually they suffer. Lakini watu wana kupigana na jamani, watu wana umia. Okay? Now, so we look at the scripture, it says that love your wives as Christ loves the church. Hayo, na kwa ngalia mstari, maliki na sema kwamba, mpende umeo vile Christo Yesu alivi openda kanisa. Jesus was willing to do anything for the people that bless them. Yani Yesu alikuwa tayari kufanya mambo yoyote kwa sababu ya kanisa. So Jesus said to the woman, we were talking about the woman who was 12 years bleeding, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has healed you. Yesu akamwambia ile mwanamke aliyekuwa anatoka na damu ya kwamba mwanangu imani yako imekuponya, jive moyo. When Jesus said take heart means don't worry, relax. Kwa hivyo Yesu anaposema jive moyo anamwambia So Jesus was caring about her feeling. So husbands, when you go home, you can say to the wife, Oh, you have been working so hard for the whole day. You have done so many things in the home. It's so difficult. Actually, being a woman working all day long at home is not easy. When I hear a lady say, "Man, I'm not easy," I'm not easy. But I can hear her, and she's not a bomber. She can't see me, and she's pretty good around my family. So when we can appreciate the wives, the wife feel cared for. When you go to the home, you see your husband, and 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 you see your husband, Upendo ni kumfanya yule mtu ambaye uko na yeye asikie kwamba ako sawa na pia anajaliwa. And doing things the other person likes. Na kufanya vitu ambavyo huyo mtu anavipenda. And then next Jesus called her daughter. Na sasa Yesu akamuita binti. This is a you know daughter means relationship you know my daughter. Binti ni jina la kuonyesha kwamba ni jina la uhusiano. We want to have a relationship husband and wife. Ya kwamba tunafaa tuwe na uhusiano kati ya mke na mume. Now I know in Africa people like to call the wife mama. Amegundua kwamba Afrika watu wanapenda kuita wale wa mama wa umri wa juu kwa zidi wanawaita mama. Now it is true in some cultures too. Ni ukweli kwa sababu hata kwa nchi zingine ni hivyo. But I call my wife a special name. 
lakini yeye anamuita mkewe jina la kipekee jina special. Yep. Before marriage to you have a special name for your husband or wife. Je, wakati ulikuwa haujaoa wala kuoleka, ulikuwa na jina special la mkewe ama mmeo? And after marriage the name changed to Baba or Papa. Na sasa baada ya kuingia katika ndoa, jina likabadilika likawa Papa Mama. It's no longer an intimate name. Sio ne jina la kimahusiano. Even when we call Jesus, you know, I call Jesus by different names. Hata tunapomuita Kristo Yesu, tunamuita kwa majina tofauti. I call him my beloved one. My beloved one. Anamuita mpendwa wangu. I call Father Papa. Anamuita Baba Baba. And I enjoy God. Na yeye ana sherekea kuwa na Mungu. We can enjoy each other. Pia wewe unaweza kusherekea mwanzo. When you look, when you see your wife and say, I'm so happy to see you come home now. I'm so happy to come home to you now. Ya kwamba unapomuona mkeo unamwambia, nimefurahia sana kukuona ni bora furaha kuwa pamoja na wewe. When I'm away from home, I tell my wife, now is one day shorter, I'm coming back to you. Now are two more days, I'm coming back to you. Akiwa inje vile hapo hivi inje huwa anamwambia mkewe zimebaki tu siku mbili na kuja kwako imebaki tu siku moja alafu inarudi kwako she knows that and treasure her anajua kwamba anampenda na anamdhamini now some people will say pastor you are spending too much time on your wife na wakati mwingine watu wanasema mtu wangu yaani mke wako umemchukulia muda mwingi zaidi let me tell you my wife makes me a more real person anasema mke wake anamfanya anaonekana kuwa mwanaume ambaye ni mwanaume i can understand the needs of people more when i have my wife telling me helping me yani anaweza kuelewa mahitaji ya watu zaidi wakati mke wake anapomzungumzia i learn how to have language that people can understand how to communicate to the needs of the people ya kwamba yeye na mke wake wako na ile lugha ambayo watu wengine hawawezi wakaelewa So the marriage not only makes me happy, it makes me a better pastor. Sio kwamba basi ile ndoa inamfanya kuwa mtu wa furaha, lakini inamfanya pia kuwa mchungaji sawa sawa. You know this that when I speak, I speak real situations in marriage and in and in and in our relationship with God because my wife has influenced me in many ways. Unagundua kwamba anapoongea, anaongea maneno ambayo ameyapitia ni matukio yaliyofanyika halisi. Anayezungumza kwa sababu mke wake amemsaidia kuelewa hayo mambo. Okay? Now I'm going to repeat again what husband and wife should do to each other and what we should not do to each other and then we conclude. Anataka kumalizia kwa kuzungumza kile ambacho mwanaume inafaa ufanyie mwanamke na kile ambacho mwanamke inafaa ufanyie mwanaume na yale mambo ambayo hatufanyi kuyafanya. Now, number one, for both of us is to say, my spouse is the most important person on earth. Kwa hivyo, jambo la kwanza ni kwamba mke ama mume usee kwamba mke wangu ama mume wangu ndiye mtu wa muhimu duniani kote. Can you say with him? Say with him. Oh, anasema kwamba haya murudie nyuma. Useme kwamba kama wewe ni mke useme mume wangu. Kama wewe ni mume useme mke wangu. Useme kwamba wewe mke wangu ama wewe mume wangu ndiye mtu wa muhimu sana duniani kote. Sauti za wamama hazisikiki. Wanaume tuko juu sio. Okay. And then we need to understand our spouse. What he likes, what he doesn't like. They have repeated. I don't. Okay. Ah, ni lazima pia uelewe mke wako anapenda nini na aapeni nini na mume wako anapenda nini na nini akipendi. Why is like a husband to listen to them and say loving word? So husband understand that you say that to your wife, you notice she will change. Mume, you kwamba mke anataka sana wewe mwambie kwamba maneno ya kumpendeza. Na ukimwambia maneno ya kumpendeza, huyo mke atabadilika. Now, what should I ask you? Have you noticed your wife change after you change? 
Yes. Can you tell? Can you share with them in both languages mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how she has changed when you change? <laughs> <laughs> So when we were living, when I was living a bad life, my wife was not living peaceful life. She could live every time she could be crying, but when I changed, she also changed. The way she used to answer me when I ask a question, she changed and now she answers accordingly with the love. Okay, wonderful. So you enjoy your relationship now, right? Yes. Okay. So what I want to say is you understand him or her, you understand why you need care and listening. And then when we talk to them like that, listen to them, and not just commend, don't commend your wife. Now we are come on a woman who CJ2, who come on to a poor Marisha, who can be the same of finding him in a hill, who's young Marisha. If we commend our wife or lay out the wife, we'll lose a, a loving wife. Yeah, come on, number one, Zoom Zia. But we listen to her and care about her. We have a princess as a wife. Lakini unapomsikiliza, unapomsikiliza na kumtuna na kumpenda, hautakuwa tu na mke, lakini utakuwa na malikia. And she will like you more. Na atakupenda zaidi. And then for the wife, don't nag your husband. Na wewe kama mke pia usije uka muonyesha mmeo madarau but I wish you what he has done lakini ukashukuru kwa kile ambacho amekifanya and tell him you're strong man you're a good man na umwambie kwamba wewe ni mtu wa nguvu wewe ni mtu mzuri and you have done these good things I like it na kwa sababu umefanya jambo hili nzuri mimi nalipenda and when you you spend so with the guy and husband when you spend time with me it makes me very happy Na sasa unapokuwa unamwambia unapokuwa na mimi vipindi virefu inakuwa na furaha. Then we don't irritate the other person. Usiseme usiongee maneno usiongee maneno ya ambayo itamkasirisha mtu huyo. So when we can speak to each other in a way that makes the other person happy, then the marriage will be better. Unapozungumza maneno ambayo yatamfanya maneno ambayo yatamfanya mwingine awe na furaha mtu huyo ataishi maisha mazuri and then also we do actions that the other person likes na pia unapofanya ufanye vitendo ambavyo huyo mtu anavipenda if we do actions to you know kongento kongento if we do actions that make the other person happy then you can live together harmoniously. And then, when we know that the other person has problems, we listen. And if there are any conflict, for instance, some husband don't listen to the wife and don't bring money back or don't help the family. Now it's a difficult situation. What the wife can do is to be as nice as possible to the husband. And sometimes I will bring the husband back to her. 
na hilo litafanya mume arudi mahali mkewe yuko and not to be affected by his bad behavior na sasa asije aka akaadhirika na tabia zake mbovu and love the care and change the husband gradually yani upendo na kutunza utafanya huyo mume abadilike but i know there are some very difficult situation lakini naelewa basi kuna vipindi kuna hali zingine ngumu but love is the only way to make the family better lakini hiyo ndiyo tu njia ambayo yaweza kufanya ndoa zetu zikawe na furaha okay now uh, there is much more to say but today i was conclude here anayo mengi ya kuzungumza lakini nataka kumalizia hapo do you have any quick question you want to ask about what we talk about today Anauliza je, kuna mtu ambaye ana swali angelipenda kuuliza kwa kitu ambacho amekufundisha sasa kwa haraka sana. Yes, come quickly if you have questions. If anyone has question, if anyone has question, come quickly to the front. Kama kuna mtu ambaye ana swali, asonge mbele huko. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Eh swali yangu kwa mkene ni kwamba the question to the visitor is this wakati alikuwa anafundisha hii lesson when he's been teaching this session ah uh, bibi yake alipiga simu <laughs> when you are teaching <laughs> your wife <laughs> has phone ah sisi toge toge waje hii lesson sikiza kwanza asumbuze na bibi yake <laughs> so so ni kwamba wakati nilikuwa nafundisha bibi yake alipika simu you you tell me tell me the complete so ni kwamba sasa sisi ambao tulikuwa hiyo lesson Tungewaje asumbuze na bibi yake kwanza ndio tuendelee na mapana. Kama ni makosa tunaomba msamaha. It is asking that when you be teaching somebody call you your phone and you suspect is your wife. Would it be a good idea maybe we leave you you talk to your wife then you come and continue or is it bad? Okay, thank you. Okay. My wife called me now there must be a reason. Nike wake amempigia simu saa hizi na maanisha kwamba kuna sababu ya kupiga simu. Because we are having a service in Hong Kong. It's finishing now. Kwa sababu kuna eh mkutano wa kanisa kule Hong Kong ambao unamalizika sasa. But he might have she might have something to ask me. Lakini amepiga simu kwa sababu labda kuna kitu ambacho anataka kumuuliza. So I will find out after the meal. Sasa atafuatilia kujua tatizo lilikuwa ni. But she usually if she knows this my name she doesn't call me. Na yeye anajua wakati ambapo ako katika huduma yeye hampigi simu akifundisha. I have no trust in her and I know that there must be a reason. Na sasa yeye kwa sababu anaelewa huyu mke tayari bado yuko kanisani na anampigia simu lazima kuna sababu ya kupinga. I I won't stop a meeting to answer her phone. Sorry? I won't stop a meeting. Kwa hivyo yeye hata wacha kuendelea kuhubiri ili azungumze lazima amalize mkutano. Okay, the question the question is more for me. I I I'm asking you to have question for yourself. Hilo swali lilikuwa linakuwa kwa hivyo anauliza kwa mambo ambayo amefundisha. Je, kuna mtu ana swali? Yes. If you have question come out. Yes, I'm ready. Uh, I have a question from the session you have been teaching. Ana swali kutokana na fundisha aliyokuwa akifundisha. When I married after some two to three months. Alipooa baada ya miezi miwili ama mitatu. I had my wife extended me that he really feels that problem even if I do what. Uh, how will I do what at least to believe that he may Sarenda and remember to keep and live a good life. Every time I get to start with him, he remembers what I did previous previous time. How will I do to her that I one or another way that he forgets to be compliant? Okay. Let me give a question. The first 
question is, the wife would keep reminding him about his faults. Yes. And then I'm happy about him, so what can I do? Swali ni kwamba, wakati ya lipo owa mke, wakisha ishi, mke akajua makosa yake, sasa na hayo makosa aliyawacha. Lakini mke anaendelea kumkumbusha kila siku. Unajua ulikuwa unafanya hivi. Unajua ulifanya hivi. Unafanya na mna gani? Okay. I want to say that in all marriages there must there always some problem somewhere. Anataka kusema katika ndoa zote zote ni lazima tuko na matatizo sehemu fulani. And each one would have done something wrong. Na kila mmoja wenu ni lazima kuna kitu ambacho alikifanya kimakosa. The husband and wife can talk together when we have done something wrong what should we do? Sasa mume na mke inafaa wakae pamoja alafu wazungumuze kuhusu hayo mambo. Now for my wife when I admit I have done something wrong and I say yes I will do I will pay attention to it. I, I will try not to do it. Then she will stop. She will stop nagging. Yeye mke wake anapomwambia kwamba umefanya jambo hili na si nzuri, atamwambia mimi nitajaribu basi nikarekebishe na sitarudia tena. Mke wake mambo yatakuwa yameishia hapo hapo yasikia tena. She will let go as soon as I say okay I'll pay attention to that. I try my best but I might not do it perfectly. Ataachia mambo hayo hapo hapo hata endelee tena kumuuliza kuhusu hayo mambo ambayo yamepita. Na son, na she is a very peaceful person. Yeye mke wake ni mke wa amani zaidi. Na we have an agreement. If she gets emotional, I will just tell her you have some emotions now. In, in a peaceful way. Wakati mke wake anapokasirika, atamwambia tu katika njia ya amani. Nimeona sasa umekasirika. And also if she is talking about something and she's unhappy, my first thing to do is to go to her and hold her hands to listen to her. Na sasa anapoanza kuzungumza kitu ambacho niki akiinicha uchungu na asida, kitu cha kwanza huyu jamaa atafanya ni kwenda kumshika mkono na kwenda kumsikiliza na kumwambia ni. Now if the wife is not willing to forgive you, you can ask her, what would you like me to do? Kama mke wako hayuko tayari kukusamehe, hebu nao ukamuulize sasa unataka kufanya nini? Una gani? Asking questions is a good way to understand your wife and find a solution. Yaani muulize katika njia nzuri ili kwamba kumuelewe mke wako na pia akuelewe. Because men and women think very differently. Kwa sababu mke na mume huwa wana kila mtu ana mawazo tofauti. I told my wife I will never be like you. I'm always a man sometimes I will miss your feelings. Alimwambia mke wake ya kwamba atajaribu asije atakukosea. Japo kwa hivi mwanadamu wa kawaida makosa inaweza kupatikana. And then uh, and she accepts it. Then I will never be the same as her. There are always some difference. Ya kwamba atafanya uwezo ili kwamba mabadiliko yaonekane hata bakia kuwa pale pale. For marriage to be good, it needs both persons to to cooperate. Ya kwamba ndoa kuwa nzuri na itaji hawa watu wawili wafanya kazi pamoja. So I encourage all the married people here go home with your husband and wife and and talk to him or her and say how can we make this marriage better? What can I do? First say what can I do? Ya kwamba anawahimiza wale ambao katika ndoa wanapotoka hapa enda ukae wawili ukaulizane tufanye namna gani? And don't say accusing words like you have been bad in the marriage, you have destroyed the marriage, and you have to repent. Na usizungumze ni kama unamurukumu mtu kama hauja kuwa mwema, hauja fanya hili, ya mwili makosa, usipanungu. So avoid accusation. Ya kwamba, basi, uwache mambo ya kugomba, ya kugomeza mwaza. Okay, any question? Now, if other people have questions, come up to the front. My question to the visitor. Since the birth of our wife, we are two wives. Na two wives. Na mimi miko na ukato kufraya na mwa kufraya. And she has time to.
be happy with her husband. Na huyo mzama anakuja na kuanza huyo mume mmoja. Anakuja? Anakuja yaani amemkwaza ama wamekozana huyo mke mwingine. And the other woman doesn't show love to her husband. Mume mwenye anataka kufurahisha mume wangu na yeye ana ile furaha ya mume mke mwingine. Na sasa yeye asina angani na nifanya yani. What what can I do because when my husband comes and the other woman has made him unhappy what can I do because she's ready to show love and to be happy but when he comes he is very very unhappy the other woman he or she filled with envy yeah. the other woman has very strong envy okay okay oh, envy okay thank you well Two wives a problem. Sorry? Two wives a problem. Why are we really doing that? You must have teased so bad. Because women are the sense of possession. But if you look at it, you can see that you can't even see that you can't even see that you can't even see that. Each woman wants to keep her husband totally. Yeah, and if you look at it, you can see that you can't even see that you can't even see that. Now, unfortunately, you are in this situation. I would say, communicate with the other wife. Anasema kwamba tafuta njia ukazungumze na yule mke mwingine. Show respect to her and be kind to her. Yani we ukuwe mpole kwa ke na kumpenge. And then when you're comfortable together, you can talk about this, you know, how can we have a happy the only way is still respecting her and then finding a way that you can all three talk together peacefully and all three can enjoy the life here. Wake wawili na mume mmoja alafu mzungumuze haya mambo mtengeneze ndoa yenu kwa na furaha. But of course you know it, for men we should not have two wives. Lakini wanaume sio vizuri mkawe na wake wawili na zaidi. Okay, any any other question? If not come quickly. Now you have question sent to the front so you you pray. Kama una swali
lakini kama unaweza kumfanya huyo mtu abadilike asilimia moja tu tayari umeanza mwendo katika mwendo mzuri sometimes we have to discern this person can he change kitu cha kwanza ni lazima uangalie na uwe na ufahamu huyu mtu anaweza kubadilika at least we don't argue we don't fight at least it won't make the fight worse ya kwamba wewe usianze kupigana vita manake unapoanza kupigana na utaharibu mambo zaidi okay so i'm just saying with the best of the situation ya kwamba katika hiyo hali jaribu kufanya kitu kizuri now i want to conclude by saying something about those who are not married yet nataka kumalizisha na kuzungumzia jambo la mwisho kwa wale watu ambao hawajaingia katika ndoa hapa i want to say that there is pressure here that you have to get married because from the society we might despise people who are not married nataka kusema kwamba ni hapa kuna msukumo kwamba lazima uoneke manake usipooneka hauwezi kuwa na heshima hata katika jamii but i want to say in the first Corinthians chapter 7 it talks about we don't all we we don't have to get married lakini wa Corinthians sura ya saba inasema kwamba si lazima uoneke au uoe If God prepares a person, a Christian, then and then God arranges it, we can marry. Kama Mungu ataandaa mtu ambaye ni Mkristo basi nenda ukaoneke ama uonee. But if the person is not a Christian, I will say don't marry. Now kama mtu huyo si Mkristo, usiende kuoneka because this it will be suffering and also it's hard to stay as a Christian. Kwa sababu kutakuwa na machungu na itakuwa hali ngumu zaidi. And then I will encourage people to seek God's will to guidance. Lakini nitawahimiza watu wakatafute basi mashauri ya Mungu na mwelekeo kutoka kwa Mungu. And don't take the pressure of the people who ask you are you going to get married. Na usichukue tu vile kwa watu na kusukuma uoneke, alafu wewe unaingia katika kuoneka na mdogo na kuwa ngumu usifanye hivyo. 